you have called for a holy convocation to come into your house, the very gate of heaven here on earth. Help us, Father, for we are weak, the weakest of the weak. And this last generation, and we need the blood of your Son to cover us. We need your Holy Spirit more than ever before for the evil that surrounds us for such a time as this Lord you have made certain promises and your people are living as if they do not believe them help us Father to not only know and understand but to apply into our lives fully. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This week and next week are very special weeks for Though we are in the subject of Daniel and Revelation in a series, we will be, in one sense, dealing with a subject that is extremely in its relationship to Daniel 8 and 9. There is fanaticism that has swept across Adventism. And between this week and next week, I pray that the fanaticism will be shown as what it is. And that people will be able to get down on their knees and ask forgiveness and stand on the platform as God has given. We begin today in Daniel 8, 14. As it reads, And he said unto me, Unto two thousand and three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. 
I believe with all my heart that we as a people have spent way too much time on one aspect of this verse and almost completely ignored the last part. Then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. The 2300 day prophecy ceases to be present truth if we forget its direct importance is leading to the then. Then shall. Not before, but as soon as the then. This two word phrase must stick into our minds for it is a very critical point of our eternal salvation. Yes, the subject today and next week is salvational. There are very, 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 very few things that actually can be considered salvational by the definition of salvational. But this is one of them. Then shall. This is not a possible event. It must be a desired reality. For God said, then shall. Satan has placed in today's Adventist circles many errors which do grave harm to the declaration of God. Then shall. But when we get to the point of clearly understanding the then shall, we must ask which sanctuary really needs the cleansing. Here is where we will focus for now in chapter 8 and 9 of Daniel. Has firmly grounded us into the timeline of the 2300 days or years of prophecy. We must learn and understand which sanctuary is Daniel 8.14 actually speaking about? Is there more than one? Is there more than one application to the verse? Here I would submit is the reason why God brought on the Adventist scene in 1888 two young men whom God gave what much light straight from his throne and inspired from his Holy Spirit. These men did not conjure up things of their own. The Holy Spirit of God guided their minds as they studied to learn the irrefutable set in motion of God's salvational truths. But Adventists have lost sight of the then shall. We have long forgotten the real present truth of the sanctuary that is to be cleansed. Oh, some may teach about the heavenly sanctuary. Others may profess to accept God, the judgment of God is going on now. But since 1960, Seventh-day Adventists have largely taught the work of Jesus is no more than a legal transaction being done in heaven in the behalf of the true believer. This theology is just of just a legal transaction is Satan's lie which allows the professed Christian to have no need of character transformation or victories over sin and its nature in our life. This air is damning, and the majority will go into perdition because of it. It is purely a denial of the very foundation for the reason of our need of salvation, to make an end of sin. Not just by the life of Jesus as our example, but that God will have a people who will have by the faith of Jesus alive in them through the working of God's Holy Spirit. They will have died, excuse me, died to self so completely 
to hate sin as God hates sin so thoroughly that they will also have the righteousness of Christ completely. Amen. The purpose today is that we who profess to be Seventh-day Adventists must be firmly grounded upon the very subject which God uses to make his perfect distinction. Perfectly identifying who were and are his real chosen people. What is it that makes us who we are? Seventh-day Adventist. It's not the Sabbath, but the sanctuary message of the heavenly sanctuary. Jesus Christ, the Son of God and Son of Man, our high priest of the heavenly temple, made without hands. I cannot say this any more distinct and clearly as did Elder and Dr. David Paulson recorded on April 11th, 1901 in the General Conference Bulletin. He wrote, It is not a mere coincidence that when the light flashed to this people with reference to the cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary, that at the same time corresponding light was flashing upon us as how to cooperate in securing the cleansing of the earthly temple. Amen. This earthly temple must be the cleansing of our individual soul temples. Amen. It is not a mere coincidence, but was in the hand of God that a people should be prepared to meet him that a people should be getting ready to pass over without seeing death. That was to have a special cleansing done, work done for them. And that is why the light has been flashing upon this last generation. This great truth with reference to the cleansing of these soul temples has specially come up in this last generation. The cleansing of the heavenly temple, the cleansing of our minds, the soul temple, both coming to God's called out people, Seventh-day Adventists, for a work of preparation of a glorious work. God has taught his people their individual need of cleansing. God has provided everything for the, in this last generation to understand his sovereign will. Therefore, in continuation from last time when we opened with we, we now the 2300-day prophecy, we apply it to ourselves here today. The antitypical day of atonement, the one yearly feast of the type, which is to be understood and observed by God's people in the context of the heavenly temple. There has been a lot of controversy in this subject of the feast days, and by God's grace, next week, as we wrap up what we're doing here with the cleansing of the sanctuary, we are going to understand from Scripture, from the writings of Ellen White and wherever else the Lord leads, to understand the reality of what we do when we presume to think to observe the feet days of the earthly sanctuary instead of following Christ into the most holy of the heavenly sanctuary. You cannot have it both ways. You're either of the earthly or you're of the heavenly. You are not of both. Amen. Christ has said clearly, you can serve mammon 
or God, but you can't serve them both at the same time. Amen. We, at this time, are on the, in the courtyard of the heavenly sanctuary. Amen. And Daniel makes it clear, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Remember the lesson book of the earthly services given to the Hebrews was only a shadow of the reality of which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the heavenly must be seen and understood in as much deeper manner with its effectiveness of eternal magnitude. Let us never forget that the work of the antipical day of atonement is accomplished in heaven and here on earth only with those who are living in cooperation with that work in heaven. The prophet of God, Ellen White, wrote in Review and Herald, February 11th, 1890, this extended quotation. Christ is cleansing the temple in heaven from the sins of what? People. the people and we must work in harmony with him upon the earth cleansing the soul temple from its defilement this work we must do in a work of cooperation a work of submission must be accomplished in, it is in a spiritual nature and its work in our actions also. Amen. It is a work of physical and practicality. It is a work of mental perseverance and persistence. If we work, if we will work thus, we shall find that the sweetest influence of God's Spirit will be wrought in our life. Grace and peace and strength will take the place of strife and weakness. Yeah. And instead of talking discouragement and gloom, we shall speak of God's life, love, and joy. Yeah. Amen. I would like to stop here for a moment mm -hmm. and remind us we need to listen to what we say. We need to listen to how we talk. Do we speak everything in the negative or do we attempt to be positive in how we speak? It makes a big difference whether we have the Spirit of God or the Spirit of Satan unknowingly in our lives. For if we only can speak in the negative, I challenge you to go to the Scriptures and find me anywhere where Christ spoke in the negative. I don't think you're going to find it unless you're going to talk about when Christ told the, the uh, Pharisees and the Sadducees, you vipers, you snakes in the grass. He wasn't speaking a negative. He was speaking straight out facts. True. That's not the kind of negative I'm talking about. And you that speak it in the negative, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We need to be more positive in how we communicate. Amen. Discouragement comes when we always talk in a negative. But if you talk in a positive, with the blessings of God in our mind, we will not see the discouragement of negative. Look at the children of Israel. Standing there on the side of Egypt next to the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. There was a whole lot of negative going on. God was giving them an opportunity to live in the positive. But they failed. And only as they followed Moses' instructions to walk down to the Red Sea did God open it up. 
before they started walking, they were complaining an awful lot. We need to stop complaining. Amen. We need to stop being so weak-minded that we do not understand and see the glory of God. We need to speak of God's provision and light and move forward in that. Amen. The fruit of the cooperation with our high priest is real and effective. It is easily seen in the life, but it is a rare fruit of heaven's peace. It is a rare fruit of strength in the most trying of trials and the most difficult of circumstances. But continuing the prophet writes, we shall be looking at things that are not seen, which are not temporal, but what? Eternal. Eternal. When we gauge in this work, the angels of God will draw near to communicate divine power and combine with heavenly strength with human weakness. I fear we take our spiritual life far too grand. In fact, I believe that we are presumptuously thinking that our, our viewpoint of spiritual health and well-being is of value. Notice this. How many of us can sincerely declare we seek to see things not seen in our daily life and daily activities? God is declaring that until we are making a habit of seeing life by the perspective of eternal value, the angels of God are not drawing near us. I'm not speaking of the guardian angels, the angels appointed to be by our side 24-7. I'm speaking of the special angels given to direct instruction from the throne of God for our lives who like Daniel came to Daniel and said, go this way, do this. Notice their purpose is to draw near, to communicate divine power, to bring heaven strength. Are we fooling ourselves to think we are able to live without divine strength? Are we thinking our heavenly father is helping us? When in fact our presumptions are driving the angels of God away from us? Do we desire victories in our lives yet find ourselves falling constantly short? Remember, the very results of obedience to God's method of life come when we are seeking to be constantly seeing the eternal and not the temporal. Amen. What is not seen by our physical eyes needs to be the reality of our life and not the fantasy. Hmm. Our spiritual lives are being led more like a fantasy land that we hope will come true. And we allow our lives here on earth to dictate our spirituality. Continuing, she writes, Then we shall grow into the image of the Lord. We shall be learning how to believe in Him, learning how to commit our souls to Him as unto a faithful Creator. Amen. The Apostle says, It is God that worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. God says then meaning, which is because God has designed previously must be first and then the then comes. Then we shall grow into the image of Jesus as we were created to be. Then as we grow, there will be signs of that growth 
by our learning to believe and learning to commit ourselves daily, moment by moment, surrender to his will for our lives and not our own designs. <clears throat> Dying to self and knowing what it means practically to die to self. Dying to our sinful natures, culture, and traditionalism. Living for him and not for ourselves. And as a result, our mental and spiritual powers increase. Yeah. As we learn of Christ, we shall understand how to keep our spiritual strength. We shall feed on the Word of God. We shall have the blessed experience described by the Apostle in these words in 1 Peter 1, 8, saying these, whom having not seen ye love oh excuse me we got a wrong I missed a whole bunch of slides I'm sorry about that whom we have not seen ye love and whom though now ye see him not yet believing ye rejoice with unspeakable full glory. Notice the date of this quotation. No one can rightly deny that God's prophet bringing into the perspective of the very 1888 message of righteous by faith. These few sentences comprising distinctly clear plans of God that anyone who cooperates with God and our high priest Jesus Christ their lives will be transformed the antipical day of atonement will become a reality in the life but but unless there is the first seeking of eternal things above all else will be of no help from the angels of God. There will be no power from heaven's throne. We will not have the ability to grow into the image of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We may think we know something of faith and truth, but will in heaven's eyes know nothing. This one quotation should be meditated upon until the very fabric of our life is made clear. Why? It's God's blueprint for the very cleansing of the very sin nature that we war against and must have purged from our life. Remember, we're asking our Heavenly Father to teach us the present truth of our personal individual responsibility in cooperating with our high priest for the purpose of having our soul temple being purified of all sin the sins of action and the very nature of sin E.J. Wagner wrote this word, these words in the present truth UK September 4th 1902 it was then quickly republished in the Advent Review and Sabbath Herald in 1902. The blotting out of sin is the erasing it from the nature. Mm -hmm. Amen. The being of man. Mm -hmm. Now we should stop right there and just let that sink in. The blotting out of sin is the erasing it from the nature, the being of man. Do you believe that Christ can blot your sin out? Yes, he can. Then why are we just still wallowing in bent towards sin? Has God failed? No. 
Have we really looked at the gospel from a practical, applied sense? You see, the blood of Jesus cleanses from all sin. All means all. It doesn't mean some and not all. Wagner continues, our bodies are but the channel, mm -hmm. the border, the sand upon the shore of the cover of life. Mm -hmm. Impressions have been upon us by sin. At the seashore, when you see a smooth piece of sand, your first impulse is to mark something on it, to write characters upon it. And that's what children do. They'll come up to the beach and they'll, they'll, they'll write their name in it. Oh, look, I, can, I wrote in the sand. Mm -hmm. And then notice what Wagner says next. Then the sand comes up, the sea. the sea comes up, and each wave that passes over it helps to obliterate it, the impression until it is what? Entirely blotted out. Entirely blotted out. Mm -hmm. Even so, the stream of life from the throne of God will wash away and blot out the impressions of sin upon us. Amen. Amen. Now see, there's a problem here. We go to God and ask for forgiveness. But when we ask for forgiveness, we don't leave the habit at the cross. That's true. That's right. We pick the habit back up and carry it back home with us because we like the habit. We don't want the consequences of the habit. See, we need to learn not only to confess our sins, that they may be forgiven, covered by the blood of the Son of God. We need to ask God to help us learn how to leave the things that we need to give up at the cross. Because until we can leave it at the cross, the blood of Christ can't wash it away, can't wash away our past enjoyments, cannot wash away the things that we know we need to have covered. True. Because if it's like the child writing in the sand, the water comes up over it and kind of washes it away. And the child gets down there and writes again. And the water comes back. And the more the water comes, the more the child writes. That's who we are. We're the child. We keep writing in the sand and not letting God wash it out. Hmm. Sure. We keep writing in the sand because we keep our eyes and our minds in the things of this world. Yes. You see, as we feed upon the spiritual meat of God's present truth daily, the streams of light will by the power of God's Holy Spirit destroy the effects of sin. But we got to keep our minds heavenward, not earthward. Amen. Individually, we must plead before our Heavenly Father that light from His throne by His Holy Spirit will enable us to understand if we will diligently be seeking his authority. Diligently seeking to have our self destroyed, our self interest destroyed. You see, if we are loving a profession above the eternal realities in our spiritual walk, in God's truth for these last days, we will not be saved. Godliness sobriety, consistency will characterize the life and example of what? Every true Christian. Put this in our minds. This paragraph is talking 
only in the context of every true Christian. If these things are not in your life, then you will know but from God's prophet, you are not a true Christian. You may be a professed Christian, but you are not a true Christian. The work of Christ is doing in the sanctuary above will engage the thoughts and be the burden of the conversation. Because by faith he has entered into what? The sanctuary. The sanctuary. Notice the mind of the true Christian. His burden of thought is focused where? In the, the heavenly sanctuary. Yeah. The burden of his thought is focused on the work of his high priest, Jesus Christ. In the heavenly sanctuary. Amen. Not that of his fellow man. Not that of his spouse. Not that of his preacher. And not that of his son and daughter. He is thought focused on one thing. The work of his high priest. Because by faith the true Christian dwells in the most holy in the heavenly sanctuary that their their mind may be made what clean from the acts from the motives from the thoughts of sin committed but also from the very nature of sin never forget this he the true christian is on earth but his sympathies are in harmony with the work of Christ doing in heaven. This is why it's important to look at the story of Daniel and the lion's den. Like we talked about a few weeks ago, the Spirit of God made it clear. Daniel's heart was walking step by step with heaven. Mm -hmm. And when Daniel was like that, he was still doing the work in the palace. He was still doing whatever in the royal court. But his mind was in step by step with heaven. We have not allowed ourselves to learn how to be multitasked as well as Daniel. Today's society think they had multitasking started here. Daniel was doing it first class. Walking step by step. So when the government around him was out of step to the point of in shooting on his step with God, he was willing to step right into the Daniel and the, and the lions then knowing that heaven was going to be there with him. Amen. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. Amen. But you got to have Jesus with you That's right. before you can go anywhere with Jesus. Christ is cleansing the heavenly sanctuary from the sins of the people. And it is the work of all who are laborers together with God to be cleansing the sanctuary of the sanctuary of the soul from everything that is offensive to God. Amen. Two cleansings. One by Jesus in heaven. The other is the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With the surrendered cooperation of God's called out people. Amen. It's no wonder to me that Adventists have stopped so many looking and cooperating with the high, the Holy Spirit on this earth. 
denying its existence. The anti-Trinitarian foolishness, one of the prominent men, so-called, has even written a book and stated that Jesus is less divine than his father. It took the divine son of God dying on the cross to save us from sin. Amen. Divinity didn't die. That's right. But the humanity that housed the divinity did die. Don't ask me what happened to the divinity of Christ while the humanity died because I've never been told. There are some things we are to take by faith and Amen. move forward. That's right. To understand the incarnation of Christ, we will be studying that throughout eternity. So why use the finite words of human stupidity to make and understand something we were told we were studying throughout eternity is beyond me. True. But Satan has got us all worked up into the being so militant, segregist of spirituality foolishness that we can't even sit and have a conversation of reality. Hmm. If you're going to be grounded in the Word of God, if you're going to be grounded in the present truth the way God established it, you will be balanced and grounded where all, everything is shaking around you, where all the militant stupidity is going on, you can say, no, that's not what God said. You can twist the Bible. You can twist Ellen White's writings. You can twist the pioneers. But unless you have them all working together harmoniously, you are not on the foundation God established. Amen. No matter what you profess. Two cleansings. You ponder this. Meditate upon it. The true Christian living day to day in this sinful world. Yet his and her mind will be having the sympathies of heaven and be in harmony with heaven moment by moment. Amen. Whether you're a nurse, a teacher, a janitor, or a salesperson. Everything in your life will be done for the glory of God. Amen. You will not cover up the insufficiencies of something you are selling to get a higher price. You will teach not what you're told to teach, but you will teach what God wants you to teach. You will serve the medical needs of someone even if you don't like what they live and stand for. You see, if we are not actively seeking the power of God to gain victories over the nature of sin that we were born with, the actions of sin that we have cultivated, then we are lost no matter what we think we have a profession in. The religion that we profess is vain and nothing before God and our fellow man. Everything, like evil surmising, envy, jealousy, enmity, Hatred will be put away. Amen. For such things grieve the Spirit of God and put Christ to open shame. Love of self will not exist, Amen. nor will any engaged in this work be puffed up. Amen. The example of Christ's life the consistency of his character will make his influence far-reaching. He will be a living epistle known and read of all men. Amen. The Apostle James writes in the Holy Scriptures, 
the assignment that clearly needed to be accepted today. For many act out in one's life this very fact that the Bible is having vain words. Listen to James writing. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he, God our Father, give us more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Amen. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your heart, hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. We need clean hands and hearts before God. Amen. Living a life representing Christianity without excuse or fake profession. There's too much profession in Adventism. And this profession breeds the double-minded life. We cannot take time, this time lightly that we've been given. In the next few weeks, we will learn how close probation is to close. It will shake us to our bones to realize that if we have not gained victories, it may begin to be almost too late unless we get on our knees and do some whole letting go of the entanglements of this earth. James 4, 9, be afflicted and mourn. Weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, your joy to heaviness. Speaking directly to our, this last generation under the Day of Atonement, James continues, humble yourselves in the sight of God. And ye shall, and he shall lift you up. Amen. The humbling of ourselves before God is maybe the most difficult things to accomplish. Mm -hmm. The very nature of sinful humanity is one of self-reliant, self-serving, self-exalting, self-preservation, not humble. But James admonishes us, humble yourself in the eyes of God. Nothing less will bring us to the right position of an active, victorious life in Christ. Signs of the Times, September 29, 1887. It is by engaging in this work, by exercising living faith in God, that we are to perfect a Christian character. Notice this is in 1887, just before the 1888 conference. God was trying to prepare his people for the messages that were coming in 1888, and they flat rejected God. The work of the the work of cleansing the soul temple, preparing for Christ's appearing, must be done while we are in this world of what? Temptation. Temptation. Just as Christ finds us in character when he comes, so we shall remain. It grieves my heart. Words cannot express it. To see so much talk about this or that doctrine of faith. So many times it's like a personal hobby horse with no reality from heaven in the context of the Day of Atonement. If we are, as God's called out people, remain in a state of insubordination against the work of our high priest, there will come a time when light will be given to those who allow it to shine from within to a lost world for a witness. 
then this long day of day of atonement will end and Jesus will return. These last few moments of earth's probation to think we have nothing to do in cooperation with our high priest is ludicrous at best. For when our high priest completes his work for the sinners who have cooperated with his work and have entered in by faith into that temple made without hands, there will be removal of sin, removal of all sin. There will be those whose names will forever be erased from the breastplate of our high priest. And there will be those eternally there, never to be removed. You see, all sin investigated and found covered by the blood of our eternal sacrifice, Jesus Christ, we will be counted accepted before our Heavenly Father. And all things will be made right and all sin removed and placed on the originator of sin. The final moments of mercy is soon to close. Where will you and I stand? Will we be on the rock of Jesus Christ or on the shifting sands of this world's profession? It is only these called out people, sealed, that will never stagger or stumble, never waver or be uncertain, always obedience to the words of our Savior and our King. We'll be faithful to the end. We'll be firmly resolved, firm to God's word in all things in our life, now and forever. But choose you this day. We must choose every day. Don't let a day go by without choosing. We must be constantly choosing God's way in everything. For in that day, the sins of Israel will not be found. In that day, soon any inspired evil accuser desire to uncover or remember them, they will not be remembered or found. Why? Because they have been all blotted out. The true church of God, the true church of Jesus Christ will have been made ready. The true church of Jesus Christ will be prepared to go through the time which then shall come. What time, you ask? Daniel 12, 1 makes it clear. And at that time, Michael shall stand up. The prince which standeth before the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was, since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Every one that is found written in the book, may we be found with our names written in the book of life. Amen. 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 And amen. God is calling us. The question is, are you willing to say, yes, Lord, I have been a negative person. I have been looking at the earthly perspective and not the heavenly for far too long. There's whatever the case may be for any of us individually. Whatever the Lord is convicting you upon. Not being honest in tithes and offerings. Not being forthwith in your own spiritual connection, in your own spiritual development. So I'll wait until I retire, then I'll start studying, or I'll, do, I'll wait until this, or I'll wait until that. This is important, Lord. You know, you know what we want to do. Stop making excuses. 
and say, Lord, I'm coming home. Okay. Heaven is my home. This is not my home. I may live in the vicinity of Red Water and Springs, but that's not my home. I'm a pilgrim on this world. I want nothing to do with this old world. I want the new earth. Lord, I'm coming home. May that be each of our prayer. As we kneel in closing, surrender your life individually as we corporately Loving, merciful, and gracious Father, you've been so long suffering for our insubordination is greater and greater every day. You have given us so much information to know the times in which we live, but we close our eyes, we stop up our ears. And we live a profession thinking we're of any value. Help us, Father. You constantly are reaching out by your spirit. You impress upon us the truths of your reality. Help us to reject the quicksand of man's opinion and stand on the solid word of God, your son. Help us, Father. Forgive us. Save us, Lord, for there's nothing that is so important of this earth. We want nothing of this world to, to cause us to lose out on salvation. You've made it very clear that our high priest is the very center of present truth, which is the heavenly sanctuary message. Help us never to take our eyes off from that message. That it's applied into our lives and that we be clean before thee before it's ever too late. this gospel of God's kingdom for a witness and then the end shall come. Amen. May it be done in our lives for your glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.